Get up, said Jewel. Time to get to work, you lazy bones. Oh, oh, oh I can't, uh, can't remember how to call the train. Just let me sleep a little longer, and I'm sure I'll remember. Don't try to pull one over on me, young man. Your fading disorder has been cured. I saw you chugging cup after cup of magic tonic in the tavern last night. Uh... You must be mistaken, Grandpa Alman. That guy definitely wasn't me. Oh, you remember my name now, do you? Then it seems like you're all better. You had no idea who I was when you were fading. Now, enough of your nonsense. Get up. The fairy and her friends are going to be here any second. All right. I'm up. I'm up. The Maritime Express should be here soon. <laughs> That's more like it. Ah, lie there any longer and you'll start gathering dust. Uh, is everything okay? The hero, his pixie companion, and the forest fairy. Oh, I, I didn't know you were already here. <laughs> Merciful macadamias. I I'm sorry you had to see that. Oh, it's all right. Paimon knows the feeling. Who doesn't want to sleep in first thing in the morning? Does the Maritime Express run out of Constellation Metropole? Uh, yes, e each train needs a conductor to operate, and the conductors are always from the capital. The more difficult maneuvers are a little too complicated when you're made of paper. Oh, so you mean the people of Constellation Metropole aren't origami animals like you? Well, the, the city welcomes visitors from all over the world, so you're bound to run into some forest dwellers there. But yes, generally speaking, the residents of Constellation Metropole look quite different from us. Ah, you'll see for yourself soon enough. Here comes the train. Pleasure to meet you, everyone. My name is Will, and I'll be the conductor for your journey today. I'm assuming you're the one who called the train. Whoa, it's a little toy man! Yes, we, we called the train. The hero and the forest fairy need a ride to Constellation Metropole. The, the hero and the forest fairy? The ones from the prophecy? Oh, why didn't you say so earlier? We could have prepared a far more luxurious train. I'll just go back and get a better one. That's okay, Mr. Wheel. We're trying to get to the city as fast as possible. We just need you to get us across the sea. In your capable hands, I'm sure we'll get there in no time. Uh, of course, my lady. It would be an honor. Well then, all aboard, sit anywhere you like. We'll get a stunning view of Simulanka no matter where you're seated. <sighs> oh, breakfast. <sighs> hmm? Did one of you just say something? It wasn't me either. Uh, breakfast... Um... Oh, come back. Hmm... 
sounds like the voice is coming from inside the train. <sighs> oh, fish. Chicken drumsticks. Oh, gotcha. Oh. What the? What's Kirara doing here? Is she a friend of yours? Oh, let Paimon introduce you. This is Kirara. She's... Oh, wait. Actually, maybe we should wake her up first. <laughs> so noisy. <laughs> I I is it morning already? Madam, sleeping overnight in the train car is prohibited. Uh, it, it wasn't just a dream? It's all right, Kirara. Apparently we're in a world called Simulanka. We got here yesterday, too. Simulanka? So, that's what it's called. I spent all day yesterday wandering around this one city. Uh, the toy people called it Constellation Metropole. I was trying to find a way to get back home. <sighs> I was seriously starting to think I'd gotten on the bad side of some great yokai and gotten swallowed whole. Huh. I take it you're Inazuma then, Miss Kirara? She sure is. But, uh, Kirara here is kind of special. Let Paimon introduce you for real this time. Kirara is a Nekomata from Inazuma. She works as a courier for Komania Express. Huh, nice to meet you. I'm Nilu, a member of Zubair Theater. You can usually find us performing in Sumeru City's Grand Bazaar. Right now, though, I suppose I should introduce myself as the Fairy of the Forest of Blessings. Oh, you're Nilu! I've heard a lot about you from my deliveries in Sumeru. I even saw one of your performances back in the day. You're an amazing dancer. But, uh, did you say you were a... Forest fairy? Oh, yeah, that's her new identity here in Simulanka. Oh, speaking of new identities, looks like you got a new outfit yourself, Kirara. Yeah, I know. It confused the heck out of me yesterday. I just woke up in a set of brand new clothes I'd never seen before. That must mean you have a big part to play here, too. Is... is that a thing? I guess I am wearing a pair of boots, but still. Did you by any chance hear a voice speaking to you before you got here, Miss Kirara? A voice... Oh, yeah, I did hear something, but I was so freaked out my tails got all tangled, so I, uh, didn't catch much of what was said. <laughs> s s sorry for the interruption. But this, uh, Nekomata friend of yours, she doesn't eat hamsters, does she? Or frogs? Oh, no need to worry, little guys. I would never do something like that. Well, unless I'd been out in the wild too long without anything to eat. Oh, speaking of eating, I am getting a little hungry. <clears throat> Where are your manners, everyone? This young lady is a trusted friend of our esteemed hero. Now, I know a fear of felines is etched into us with ink, but I'm certain Miss Nekomata in boots here means us no harm. Sure looks like you're keeping your distance, though, Grandpa Almond. 
You will have nothing to fear, I promise. I met some origami animals in Constellation Metropole yesterday, and I even made sure to retract my claws so I didn't hurt them by accident. Plus, you all look just about as tasty as the cardboard boxes I deliver. <laughs> uh, not that I'd try to eat you even if you did look tasty. Uh, promise. Please excuse us, Mom. Uh, it's just an unconscious reaction. <clears throat> Dear passengers, it's almost time for us to depart. Oh, yeah, that. Whoops. This turned into a pretty long conversation, didn't it? All right, let's get on the train. You coming with us, Kirara? Mm-hmm. I'll ride with you to the next stop. There's a place near the Metropole that caught my eye yesterday, so I want to go explore it today. Then all that remains for me to say is, on behalf of the Forest of Blessings, thank you once again for all you've done for us. May the Goddess of Fate be with you and bless your journey. Madam Fairy, Miss Nekomata in Boots, and our brave hero. Please do visit us in the Forest of Blessings again, once peace has returned to this land. We will! We'll definitely meet again! Take care, Grandpa Almond! Have a safe trip! Wow! A train ride over the sea? What an incredible view! Please keep your head and arms inside the train at all times. We don't want anyone falling into the sea. There's a train coming the other way, too! Now that the fading disorder is cured, I'm sure the forest will be a lively place again in no time. I gotta go explore that forest at some point. It looked so pretty from the train. I just hope they, uh, won't be too scared of me. We'll be arriving at our destination shortly. Please prepare to disembark. Here we are! Constellation Metropole is right over there. It's a short walk from here to the Gear Sky Ladder, which will take you right to Metropole Square. And thank you again for choosing Maritime Express. Great! And thanks to you for a smooth and pleasant journey, Mr. Wheel. The train cars were comfortable and spacious, and I had a great night's sleep. I'll definitely be back. Um, as you wish, ma'am. Where should we go next? Is that place you wanted to check out nearby? Mm-hmm. I took a walk around yesterday, and it felt like there was something weird about it. So, I think I'll indulge my curiosity and go investigate. Want us to come with you? It's okay. You guys go ahead and visit the Metropole for now. Hopefully, that's where you'll be able to find out some more about this world. I pretty much explored the whole place from the rooftops yesterday, but for some reason... This is the place that caught my attention. <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Like, when you get a stone stuck in your claw or something, it keeps nagging at you to dig it out, but you can't focus on anything else until you do. Don't worry, if you run into any trouble, I'll be there faster than you can say, Gold Level Courier of the Komania Express. 
Okay, fair enough. We'll head to the Metropole then. Guess this is where we say bye for now. about me. Let's not forget, I'm a yokai. Everyone hold hands! Treasure for a very lovely person. Help me! So Help me! Help! Oh, oh, goddess of prophecy above, would you kind souls please help us? What happened here? Why are you all suspended in midair? I mean, being stuck in midair still beats falling to the ground and being smashed into a pile of blocks, but. I told him to be careful, but no. Never mind. Now's not the time for that. My good friends, could I trouble you to turn the clockwork key over there? I'll explain everything in a bit.
Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, what happened there? It almost seemed like we turned back time. I take it this is your first time witnessing the power of the Goddess of Prophecy, then? If so, I can see why you might think that. Basically, this is a gift bestowed upon Constellation Metropole by the Goddess of Prophecy, who rules over the natural course of all things. It helps those who have deviated from their proper path to get back on track. Proper path? Do you mean everything that happens in the Metropole has been planned out since the very beginning? Why are you saying that as if it's a bad thing? You're not explaining it clearly. Here, allow me. Of course, all the residents of the Metropole have the freedom to live their own lives. For instance, whether I use olive oil or sesame oil in my morning skincare routine is entirely my choice. But whenever something disastrous is about to happen, like when I almost got turned into a pile of rubble just now, the goddess's magic will activate in the world around us. So, in other words, it's kind of protection magic to keep people alive? You could say that. There are other situations in which it activates too, but that's basically correct. Well, in any case, we're glad no one's hurt. Are you heading to the Constellation Metropole? Yep. Do you know where we can find the Gear Sky Ladder? Oh, it's just that platform up ahead. The one with the key sticking out. Uh, that thing? Um, are you sure? Yep, that's the one. Pretty much everything in the Metropole runs on, which is to say, all the tracks are fixed. If a machine is set up to move forwards, it'll never move in reverse. This reminds Paimon a lot of Fontaine's clockwork toys. You mean, like those music boxes with dancing figures? I think I've seen one or two from the merchants in Sumeru. Yeah, exactly like that. Anyway, sounds like it's not gonna suddenly fall out of the sky, so Paimon's okay now. Should we get going? Don't smile too much, or your face will get tired. Next step is to get to the top of the Metropole, and ask the Goddess of Prophecy for guidance. If there is a king in that castle, I sure hope he won't get mad at us for trespassing. into his castle. <laughs> Paimon hopes he's not mad. Silence! The one who shall soon stand before you is the ruler of Constellation Metropole. The one who descended after a meteor shower and the protector of order and all the stars in the sky. That's a long list of titles. I bid ye welcome, guests from afar. Long have I heard of your grand deeds. O oh, fairy, who restored the lifeblood of the forest. O oh, hero, who... Uh, uh, huh? Nadia! 
Hold your foul tongue! How dare you utter Her Majesty's name! <laughs> nice one, partner. Spectacular improvisation skills. I'd expect no less from you. All right, all right. You can relax now. Allow me to make some introductions. This is a traveler and his trusty companion, Paimon. You are personal friends with Her Majesty the King? Please, forgive our grievous mistake. We had no idea. <clears throat> all right. The welcome ceremony is over. Everyone back to your stations. I will personally treat our guests to some royal hospitality. Yes, Your Majesty. Oh, come on. I've already sent them off. So, anyway, how did you guys get here? We were gonna ask you the same thing! Also, how are you already king of this nation? And where did you get a crown? Oh, wait, don't say it. You just woke up like this, right? Sounds like you've answered your own question. But before I woke up, I heard a voice say to me, You are the king of Constellation Metropole. Now go forth and save your city. A similar thing happened to me. Oh, yeah, sorry. You must be the fairy of the Forest of Blessings, right? Mm -hmm. This is Nilu, a friend that we made during our time in Sumeru. Nice to meet you, Miss Nilu. I'm Navia, the president of Spina di Rosula. If you ever get the chance to go to Fontaine, make sure you come and visit me. I'm based in Poisson. Seems like you're taking this all in stride. Aren't you nervous about getting stuck here and never being able to get back home? Why would I be worried about that? We've faced much bigger problems than this before, and we always pull through. This should be a piece of cake. Besides, life's always full of surprises. You gotta learn to just enjoy it. That sounds like a great outlook on life. You have a very optimistic spirit. Thanks, I'll take that. Honestly, though, it also puts me at ease to find out that you guys are the fairy and heroes that I've been hearing about in this prophecy. <laughs> We're kind of veterans at dealing with prophecies by now, aren't we? Uh, about that. Has anything bad happened in the Metropole? We heard about an evil dragon. Did it make a mess here, too? It sure did. Apparently, for whatever reason, he went for the stars above the city recently. Literally just flew up and started snatching them out of the sky. Luckily, the guards responded quickly and stopped the dragon from taking them back to his lair. Unfortunately, though, he dropped them before he flew off. Now they're scattered all around the Metropole. I've been out trying to retrieve them, but I only managed to get one of them before you showed up. Oh, I didn't ask yet. What brings you to the Metropole anyway? Oh, Paimon can explain! Huh, I see. So, you want to consult the Oracle of the Goddess of Prophecy. Do you know how we can do that, Miss Navia? Well, the Goddess's statue is indeed at the top of the castle. I can take you up there. However, I've heard from the citizens here that the Goddess hasn't given out any new revelations in a very long time. Really? But Grandpa Almond told us that he received his prophecy from the goddess. Oh, that's probably because the prophecy about the hero of Simulanka has been around for a very long time. But recently, people realized that the goddess didn't reveal anything about what's supposed to happen after peace has been restored. Huh, okay. Still, can't hurt to try your luck. And maybe you can help me get rid of the invaders while we're at it. Invaders? So the dragon's not your only problem? Right. The forest isn't the only place where strange things have been happening to the residents. Have you come across the gift from the Goddess of Prophecy yet? You mean... the protection magic that stops them from coming to harm? We saw it in action. Yep, that's the one. Over the past little while, this magic has been triggering far more frequently. 
We don't know if it's simply because the Metropole has grown a lot more dangerous, or if there's a deeper reason behind it. Some residents find themselves getting stuck in a place and unable to move. Others start repeating the same thing over and over again, like they're trapped in some kind of loop. If we were to use clockwork toys as an analogy, could it be that the tracks have eroded or the gears have slid out of place? That's exactly right, Nilu. That's basically what's happening. Anyway, some of the monsters outside the city saw this as an opportunity to launch an invasion. Uh, but we didn't see a single monster on our way here. That's because I already took care of most of them over the past couple of days. Of the remaining few, we trapped some of them inside the castle and chased the rest back out of the city. Okay, so to summarize, not only has the magic here gotten all messed up, but the dragons also knocked some of the stars out of the sky. Plus, there's a bunch of monsters in the city. <sighs> Sounds like there's a lot more to fix here than in the Forest of Blessings. Well, defeating the dragon and the monsters should be straightforward enough. But how do we fix the magic? Supposedly, the goddess has had it all planned out for ages. One of her oldest prophecies says this. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. Huh? But weren't the tracks the gift that she gave to her people in the first place? Does that mean she plans to take the gift back? That's what the prophecy seems to be saying, yes. So, as a result, some people are against turning the gear, despite what the prophecy says, since they fear a future where they no longer enjoy the goddess's protection. But letting this drag on isn't the answer either, is it? No, and I think they know that. But they're just too afraid to take that final, terrifying step. They're still hoping there might be an alternative solution. Now, we could ignore their objections and go turn the gear ourselves, but... Exactly. You know me well. And that's why you're my partner. I want to get as many people on my side as possible. At the end of the day, this is their city. And they should have the right to decide its future. Ooh, spoken like a true wise king, Navia. I am the boss of Spina di Rosula, after all. This may be my first time as a king, but there are a few similarities between the two roles. Traveler, Paimon, Miss Nilu, would you be willing to lend me your support? With your help, I'm confident we'll be able to find the most frictionless way to resolve the problems plaguing this city. Ah, thanks, partner. Seriously, like we'd ever say no? We're your friends! No need to ask us so formally in the future. I'm happy to help, too. This is a beautiful city, and just like the Forest of Blessings, I would love to see it return to normal as soon as possible. Ah, great! As the King of Constellation Metropole, I extend to you my gratitude. All right, everyone, follow me. I'll show you the way to the Goddess Statue at the top of the Metropole. And stay close. You don't want to get lost in my castle. It's huge!
You only get one body, so you gotta take care of it. But it's just as important to take care of your mind. Don't smile too much, or your face will get tired. Ooh. Huh? What's this? Wait. This looks like the star I found earlier. I told the guards to place it near the goddess statue. Maybe they ran into some trouble up there. Guess we'd better hurry. Did you bump into something? Oh. Well, if it hurts, just let me know. Show them. Right here. Right now. A very nice treasure for a very lovely person. you bump into something? Oh. Well, if it hurts, yeah. just let me know. <laughs> Whoa! Why is the star on top of a mechanism? Uh-oh! More monsters incoming! Right now. Positions! 
Treasure for a very lovely person. Floaty, floaty. Hey, right here, right now. With all my strength. Yeah. Help you pack this up. Too much, or your face will get tired. Feels like they really didn't want to give that to us. Emerge, right now. Emerge. Any mechanical parts? Could I have them, please? Huh. 
Right here, right now. <laughs> I see everything. Wibbly wobbly. Oh. Here. Chew. Hey. Come on out. What a nuisance. Emerge. Sure was rough. Go on, open it up. Show me what's inside. I can't move. What happened? Your Majesty, this conservative radical, he attacked us. He threw the star from the Astral Garden and even stole the magic thread linking the Oracle Pillars. But just as we were about to arrest him, the Goddess's magic activated. And now we can't move. No! Don't let he touch the Celestial Gear! What's an Oracle Pillar? You need to use it to pray to the goddess. I'll explain later. First, let's help these guys. It's okay. Let him go. But, Your Majesty... Even if we catch up to him now, we won't be able to change his mind, much less quell the fear that many others like him are feeling. All it would do is turn him further against us. Understood, Your Majesty. Also, this is the magic thread he was holding from the Oracle Pillars. Your Majesty, what should we... Ah. Please give that to the Traveler over there. I believe they have some questions for the Goddess. Yes, Your Majesty. Um, so, what do we do with this exactly? See those Oracle Pillars over there? 
Just use the magic thread to connect them together in a specific pattern, and the goddess of prophecy will answer your prayers. Oh! Sounds easy enough. Let's give it a try! To which course of fate do you seek answers, my child of Simulanka? The hero from another world. Supported by their companions, shall restore peace to this world. Go and push the gear that connects up to the starry sky. When that time comes, I shall dance and return the tracks beneath my people's feet back to the stars in the sky. So, Miss Navia was right. The goddess of- Fair enough. Guess we'll just have to play it by ear. Then first, we have to restore the sky back to its original state by putting the stars back in their position. All right. Adding in the ones we picked up on the way here, I think that's all of them. Let's go hang these stars back up in the sky. In the sky? Uh, how do we get up there? Oh, <laughs> I got us covered. We will, of course, be taking the Aerial Express. Is that a flying train? Hey, you already took a train that runs on water. Is a flying train really that much weirder? Well, at least the Maritime Express still runs on a track. Oh, come on, don't worry about it. This train has been blessed by the Goddess of Prophecy. Its whole purpose is to protect the Metropole skies. It took me a lot of effort to find it, you know. A hundred years? Are you sure it's safe? Let's not forget that the Goddess of Prophecy's magic has been going haywire recently. Well, it's not like we have any other options. Unless you want to do the honors, Paimon. Fancy flying up there on your own? <laughs> no, thank you. It's way too high up. Oh, wait, Milu. You've got a feel for how magic works here. Can you do your thing and sense if this train is a real deal? I can try. Hmm. Yes, I can sense traces of magic, but it's different from the kind I felt in the forest, so... I don't know. Okay, fine. Guess there's only one way to find out. That's the spirit. I'll come with you. Miss Nilu, will you be joining us? I think I'll stay behind. That way, if something does go wrong, you'll have someone on the ground to get you some help. That makes sense. If the train does break down, you can make us a giant origami crane to come bail us out. Or if a crane's too difficult, a finch could work.
Two-two! <laughs> Aerial Express moving out! Wow, it really is flying! What an amazing feeling! I've never been on a flying train before! Neither have we! That should do it! On to the next location! Great job! It looked like it all went smoothly. Yeah, and it was an absolute blast, too. You gotta ride with us next time, Miss Nilu. Huh? Uh, I'm okay. Uh, thanks for... Halt! What do you think you're doing? Get out of my way! What's going on? Your Majesty, there? Let us through! Stay back! It's okay. Let them through. Tuh. Y your Majesty, could we please ask you not to turn the gear that connects up to the sky? And why is that? As you have seen, the goddess's gift is very important to us. It keeps us from harm and protects our very lives. Some of us, we just aren't ready to lose that protection. I see. I understand. Huh? Your Majesty, do you mean... I won't turn that gear. Not until you're ready. What? I've said before that the Metropole belongs to the people. And they should have the right to decide its future. <sighs> but let me ask you this. How do you plan to solve the issues we are currently facing? Well, we'll start by rescuing the people that have gotten stuck. And then we'll find a way to figure out the true cause of this crisis. And have you made any headway on that? The true cause, I mean. Unfortunately not. Hey, you little... I'm sorry, my friend, but it's the truth. You have friends and family that have been affected, don't you? That have gotten stuck? Duh. I understand your concerns. But if we let this drag on for much longer, the situation may well get worse. More and more people will be frozen by the goddess's magic. Yes, but if we turn that gear now, all the tracks in this city will disappear. I know this is a hard decision to make, but have you ever thought about why the goddess might have made things this way in the first place? Huh? Why do you think she might decide to take back her gift and stop revealing further prophecies about the future? Are you saying she has abandoned us? No, quite the opposite, in fact. 
What do you mean? The goddess dearly loves this world and all the people of Simulanka. And because she loves you so much, she wants you to be able to choose your own path. <sighs> Every parent hopes their child will have a happy and carefree life. But if they're overprotective, then all they'll manage to do is keep their child trapped. If a mother bird lets her baby ride on her wings for too long, her child will never learn how to fly. Perhaps the goddess of prophecy has always known that one day, she'll have to let go. Children can only become independent if they're allowed to form their own opinions, make their own decisions, and deal with the consequences on their own. Only then will they be able to continue their journey alone, even after their parents are gone. But we've relied on the goddess's protection for so long. We don't know what it's like to go it alone. We don't know if we have what it takes. Are you kidding me? I think you've proven yourselves more than capable of that. What do you mean? You made a call in a time of crisis, and you've come all this way to talk to me. Even the guards couldn't stop you. That must have taken a lot of courage. But we only did it because we were scared. Why you set out on the journey doesn't matter. What matters is that you've proven you can choose your own path. <sighs> My friend, I fear our king is right. It is time for us to face our fears. What? But, but we... We can't go on living like this. Living in fear. Look at what it's driven you to do. You threw away a star personally created by the goddess of prophecy herself. <laughs> you once revered her more than any of us. And I think the king is right. She hasn't abandoned us. So, why don't we put our trust in her one more time? <laughs> I don't care anymore. Do what you want. Aw, he left. I'm sorry about my friend. That's just how he is. Always had a terrible temper. Please accept my apology for his impudent behavior. Is it just me, or... Has he accepted the goddess's prophecy? I think so. Not that you'll ever hear him admit it out loud. Your Majesty, please turn the gear that connects up to the sky. So, you've made up your mind? About giving up the goddess's gift? Yes, I've made up my mind. But maybe losing the gift isn't what this is about anymore. Because we've gained something, too. You have given us courage. <laughs> well said. I am proud of your decision. Now, gather around, everyone, and join me as we make the night sky of this wonderful city turn once more. So the stars hanging in the sky, they're music notes! This entire Metropole is a huge music box! That's incredible! <sighs> How do you feel? Uh, a little scared and uncertain. But for some reason, 
I feel a lot more at ease. It's as if some kind of huge weight has been lifted from my shoulders. Uh, figured out any next steps? To be honest, not really. But maybe I can start by having a heart-to-heart -heart with that stubborn friend of mine. I have an idea. If you don't know what to do, why don't you start by helping the people around you? You mean the people who got stuck because of the goddess's magic? I mean anyone and everyone who needs your help. By helping others, you'll eventually find your own path. Trust me, I have experience in this. What kind of experience, your majesty? Hmm... Ah, uh, yes. We'll need a formal organization with a catchy name before we go out and start helping people. Why don't we call it... The Spina di Rosula? Spina... di Rosula? Ooh, or even... The Spina di Rosula di Simulonka. Yeah, that's catchy. Wow, big expansion for the Spina. Moving into other worlds now. Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I like it. It's a great name. Let's do as your majesty suggests. Well then, how about I appoint you as the head of the Spina in Simulanka? While I'm off fighting the dragon with the other heroes, it'll be your responsibility to work with the guards and take good care of the people in the metropole. What? You're planning on fighting the dragon? But no, your majesty, you must reconsider! He's right! Your majesty, you can't! How are you two on the same side all of a sudden? Perhaps your majesty is unaware of this. The great dragon suddenly broke out from the Titanium Mines one day and tore the end of the world to pieces. After that, it spat out a strange fog that surrounded a whole island. No one knows what lies beyond the fog, and no one knows what has become of that poor island. Before your majesty arrived, we dispatched many soldiers to fight the dragon, but none came back alive. Yikes. Sounds worse than we thought. Isn't that all the more reason for us to go? There could still be guards trapped there, waiting for someone to rescue them. King Navia is right. We cannot simply stand by and watch as the people of this world suffer. <sighs> very well. Though I have not served by your side for very long, Your Majesty. Two days is enough for me to have learned that once your mind is set, any attempts to change it are futile. <laughs> You're a pretty good judge of character. Um, he probably didn't mean that as a compliment. Since you're serious about this, I won't try and stop you. There's only one way to reach the end of the world, and that's by taking the Maritime Express. Oh, right! So there's a line going there too? Yes. It was originally built to serve the workers commuting to the Titanium Mines, but it has been abandoned since the Dragon Attack. I'll tell the conductor to wait for you at the platform by the side gate to the Metropole first thing tomorrow morning. You're embarking on an extremely dangerous adventure. Please be careful, Your Majesty and friends. Oh, thank you for your concern. While I'm gone, I leave the Metropole in your capable hands. Yes, yes Your, your Majesty. Majesty. <laughs> Just call me Boss from now on. That's what everyone in the Spina calls me, and it's what I'm used to. So, the plan for tomorrow is... Journey across the ocean... Make it to the end of the world and defeat the dragon! Ooh, that's an adventure and a half. Do all storybook heroes have to work this hard? At least we'll get to see some amazing scenery along the way, right? Plus, we're pretty well equipped for a classic heroes versus dragon story. We got Miss Nilu as our magic caster, and I... I guess I'm the melee warrior who leads the charge? Paimon can definitely see that. Anyway, those are tomorrow's problems. Right now, all Paimon wants is to eat a proper meal, because worst case scenario, if Paimon ends up getting eaten by a dragon, she wants to do it on a full stomach. And something about the end of the world doesn't sound like a great place for food options. Hmm. Well, the origami animals in the forest only drink magic tonic. 
What do the toy people here in Constellation Metropole eat? Vegetable oil and sawdust, I think. This way, Miss Nilu. After you. Thank you, Miss Navia, but it's fine. I don't mind not riding the Aerial Express. Oh, what is it? Are you scared of heights? Huh? No, it's not that. It's just... Uh... Then you'll be fine. If you feel scared, just hold on to my hand. And if you feel really scared, hold on to both of them. You're never gonna see something like this again. Why not just go for it? Live in the moment, have some fun! Yeah... Yeah, you're right! Big circle and... Exhale... Alright, I'm ready. Let's go! So, are you all set? Ready to start investigating? Great! Let's go! I've delivered packages all over, but I've never seen a mysterious fairy tale world like this before. Looks like nobody has gotten around to repairing this house yet. Ugh, even I wouldn't dare to sleep in there. It might suddenly collapse in on you. Nothing to see here either. Maybe we can find someone to ask? Aha! Uh -huh. Over there! I bet we'll find some people there. Let's go take a look! Uh-huh. I was sure there'd be people here. There once was a goddess who ruled over fate. Before she died, she left three riddles for the kingdom she had created. What? Who said that? Long story short, on this day, a sentient feline, an outlander, and a uh, diminutive pixie arrived on the scene. They saw a narrow path off to the side. Okay, but which side? Yeah, if you gave ambiguous instructions like that to a Comania Express courier, they'd give you the parcel right back and tell you to write the delivery address more clearly. Despite how obvious the answer was, the perplexed pixie and the flummoxed feline struggled to work it out. Hmm. Although, perhaps a small part of the blame could be attributed to my dull narration. All right, let's uh, try this again. 
The path on the left-hand side seemed to give off an enticing fragrance, as if to say, uh, this is the way to wealth and glory. Ooh, that sounds like the start of a good story. Then what? Then what? The time has come to slay the dragon. How are you feeling? Nervous? I'm once curious to see what this end of the world place is like. Come on, let's go meet the others at the station. At the end of the path, the motley crew would soon spot a secret stone room. A prophecy had once foretold of a Marquis who shall one day venture inside, and thus it is named the Future Marquis Abode to Be. You like it? The Future Marquis Abode to Be? Got a nice ring to it, doesn't it? That was a little bit boastful. But before you continue, I must warn you of the danger that lies ahead. For example, under no circumstances should you sit on the chair in the center. Otherwise, the consequences could be a, a bit embarrassing. <clears throat> so many summers, winters, springs, and falls, and now at last a hero hither strides. This realm knows not what lies beyond its walls. Its secrets mystify the world outside. Wait, new voices? Who are they? <laughs> With wood and earthenware strewn all around, the demon feline's fury can't be quelled. Reducing them to rubble on the ground, she finds the vessels vacant save for... Uh... air? She finds long gone the gems that once they held. Are they describing how we broke the boxes and jars? Who are you calling demon feline? As go... Captivated by the epic poetry, and enthralled by the outstanding storytelling. Why isn't he reading the files on the desk? Hey, Boberano, maybe quit showing off and try using words he'll actually understand? I can either rhyme like a bard, or I can curse like a sailor. And right now, Cafe, you are seriously tempting me towards the latter! Namely, to remove the clockwork key from the raised platform up ahead. Cafe? I just realized, you said we all had to speak like bards, but every time you open up your mouth, I don't hear any rhymes. Yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, perhaps the Outlanders are worried that something drastic will happen the moment they remove it. Maybe that's why they're investigating the area thoroughly first. Can't fault them for that. I'm wondering if we can take advantage of this downtime to discuss whether we really need to keep this up. Oh, if you guys don't want to put on a voice and speak in verse, be my guest. Just don't blame me for your own poetic incompetence. Yeah. With wood and earthenware strewn all around, the demon feline's fury can't be quelled, reducing them to rubble on the ground. Uh, no, no you don't. I wrote that line. Don't start plagiarizing me just because you can't take a bit of criticism. Uh, look, look, let's not put form over con- As the Outlander stands before the clockwork key, they're overcome by a sudden urge to set it free! Also, Cafe, that'll be my last rhyming line. I'm not writing any more poetry until you apologize. Uh, what does it matter, anyway? I've lost count of how many people have tried this before. No one's getting that key out. Strong as stone, firm as steel, the Outlander pulls, but it does not yield. This has happened many times before, but this time is different. A thought enters the Outlander's mind. Attack! Attack! First weaken the structure, then seize the treasure!
The attack now over. Only one final step remains. Now it is the time to seize the key. Yes, finally! Come on, move your butts and your lights, assuming they're still in working order. It's showtime! No hard feelings about your lack of poetic contributions? Oh, let it go! Welcome, esteemed and noble outlander. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We represent the three great clans of this realm, having been selected as its authorized historical supervisors. Our purpose being to await the arrival of one such as yourselves who shall remove the clockwork key. My name is... You're Cape, he's Albizzi, and that's Bulbarano, right? You've done so much talking that we can already tell you apart by your voices. Aren't we missing someone, though? The guy who led us here to begin with? Who? <clears throat> and thus was born the long-awaited fellowship, destined to uncover the truth of the past. Allow me to quote, if I may, in the history of Constellation Metropole, a new page has begun. Him. Well, there's no fourth person, so which of you is the ventriloquist? Come on, out with it. We've never heard that voice before, but he sounds like he'd be good at reading bedtime stories to children. Well, whoever it is, I don't know and I don't care. Forget about him. We have far more important things to focus on, like where our journey goes from here. That key you hold is the pivot point about which the past and present of the Metropole revolve. However, between our three clans, there is some... Dispute over the historical record. Each clan has its own version of history, detailing the clan's origins and the tale of the dragon of old. And unfortunately, we don't know which one is the truth. Dragon? You mean the one that's been acting up recently? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 not that one, you adorable little pixie. When I say dragon of old... <laughs> he means a dragon that would be really... Really old if it was still with us today, but it was defeated in ancient times. The new one has nothing to do with our clan history. Uh, was that supposed to be a joke? <clears throat> uh, anyway, so you've been waiting for someone to remove the key so you can finally explore the truth of the past? Not just explore it, but argue incessantly about it. Honestly, I don't care that much. Cape's the one who's always bothering us about it. What we need to figure out is who resolved the dragon crisis. We have to know that before we can decide which is the supreme clan. The moment you removed the key from where it was lodged, you became the honorary marquee. We humbly beseech you, noble outlander. Noble traveler marquee, we ask you to help us. You and your... You're talking Puss in Boots and the pale floating pixie. Puss in Boots? Are you serious? It's better than Demon Feline, but still... Embrace it, my friend. Embrace it. Most cats don't wear boots or speak, do they? I'm not even a cat. I'm a Nekomata. Now that you know the word, I expect you to use it. Please allow me to lead you all to a sacred memorial site. It will be much easier to explain what needs to be done once we are there. This place is sacred to my clan. It's where our brave forefathers once took up arms against the dragon of old. After a bitter battle that dragged on for many days and nights, finally, our forefathers fought the dragon into submission and it fled. They took turns, though. Some forefathers worked the day shift, while others worked the night shift. So they say, it's just a legend, though. Wait a second? Did I just hear you admit that your clan's history is just a legend? A history, legend, who cares? My clan was definitely courageous, that's the point. That's the truth. And isn't the truth what we've all been arguing about non-stop for all these years? Cape's words gave the Traveler food for thought. 
Could it be that the truth in a fictional world is equivalent to fiction in the real world? But that would have to wait. Apparently, Cape was not alone in his pilgrimage to this sacred site. Unwanted company had arrived. The Traveller and the Talking Cat, <clears throat> Nekomata, decided to teach them some manners. It's as if the spirits of my ancestors were fighting through you. Here's a thought. Could be wrong, but maybe... Your martial prowess and show of courage are a more vivid reenactment of my ancestors' feats that suit the modern aesthetic. Now, let's get down to business. As we all know, time is but an illusion. Time may flow line by line, page by page, or frame by frame, but usually it flows in the form of springs and gears. And that clockwork key you have in your hand can turn back time and make the past reappear. Well, actually, my view is that the illusion of time is more of a problem of consciousness. Gears power the body, while the body is the vessel of the conscious mind. But the mind cannot understand the dimension of time, so we experience instead an endless continuum of moments as the pinion of now turns along the rack of ages. I... I'm getting flashbacks to when I was delivering packages to the Sumeru Academia. A teacher once asked Albizzi what his greatest fear was, and he replied, dragons. Boberano was asked the same question. He replied, time, and repeated the argument we just heard. The teacher then turned to Cape and posed the same question. He replied, Boberano. The manuscript that tells the truth of the historical record, the blueprint to all of creation, the work of the great mage themselves, it can be found at the beginning of the gear rack and on the very first page of the book. That, but basically, you're just saying that we need to put the key in and turn it all the way back? Exactly. It is said that in the beginning, the goddess of creation took the goddess of fate's manuscript as a blueprint, placed it under the goddess of prophecy's starry realm, and generated the world from a few magic arrays. So in a few moments, when the great clockwork key turns the local time here back to the very beginning, we will restore the magic arrays back to their original configurations. Hold on, isn't stealing part of the blueprint of creation a little dangerous? Also, how are we supposed to know the original configurations of the magic arrays? Ah, uh, uh, well, the general shapes of the configurations have been passed down over the ages. They now form the family crests of each of our clans. So you'll just need to reference my family crest and join the dots accordingly. To address your other concern, when the house has already been built, do you really think that taking away the construction crew and blueprint will cause it to collapse? The Traveler Marquis prepares to insert the Great Clockwork Key into the nearby keyhole. I guess we should start here?
Behold, the sacred writings that record the truth of... No, wait. That have shaped the truth of history. Gather round and let us bear witness. Feast your eyes, rejoice, and cheer, for this is the unquestionable truth. Look at the signature. Nobody is capable of forging that. I don't believe it. So, all along, our histories have been false? Don't lose heart, Albizzi. It does not follow from his is true that ours are false. That might be the most bogus logic I've ever heard. But keep up the mental gymnastics, Boberano. I've been waiting for that look of jealousy on your face my whole life, and I'm gonna savor it. And yet, it seemed that this conundrum could indeed have more than one solution. Everyone agreed that there may be more than one truth. The party decided to visit the sacred sites of the other clans and see what their documents had to say. Isn't a narrator supposed to remain detached and objective? It feels like you're forcing a narrative agenda on us here. Well, whatever. I'm in a good mood. Let's do it. The instructions say to repeat the process three times, and besides, I'm looking forward to watching you both be sorely disappointed. Let's do my clan next. I'll lead the way. We'll need the key again, right? Let me see if I can pull it out. Yoink! <laughs> Did you bump into something? Oh. Well, if it hurts, just let me know. Party finds no pedestal in which to place the great clockwork key, only a locked door. Where's your clan's pedestal? Oh, let me guess, you hid it away in advance to save yourself the embarrassment of having it exposed as a fake? You done? Okay. Now, since my clan's main claim to fame is... <laughs> Misinformation, half-truths, and fabrication. Ah, shut up, Cafe! Shut, shut up, up, Cafe! Cafe. I swear, if I wind up dead one day, the murderer was Boberano. Let those be my last words. <clears throat> my clan's claim to fame is that we outwitted the dragon of old and stole its treasure. Ergo, all articles of value that we own, including the pedestal for the clockwork key, lie behind that door. So, next step is open the door? Almost. There's one step before that. The door is protected by a smart interrogation system. We have to answer its questions, and if we get them wrong, we will alert law enforcement. Jeez! Well, do you at least know the answers? The correction fluid of time has dyed white the pages of the Book of Wisdom. Uh, no. No, I don't know the answers. But worry not! I had a quick word with the constabulary in advance. They'll ignore the alarm if we get the questions wrong, so answer without fear. Question one. Who is it? That's actually quite an amusing approach. It's probably not going to get us anywhere, but I do admire your sense of humor and your uh, commitment to it. Question one. Who is it? Ah, what an ingenious idea. Far more intelligent than Boberano's ancestors. But I still recommend against this answer. Question one. Who is it? The great yokai, Nekomada in boots. And the trusty travel guide, Pixie. Uh, travel guide. Trusty travel guide. 
Question two. By which virtue did the ancients defeat the dragon? If this is the right answer, I swear, I'll... Correct! What? Ugh. A barefaced lie. So low. Question three. Which is more real? The fiction of the outside world or the truth of this world? Hear, hear! Who can be sure that the outside world isn't just a dream? And that when the dreamer wakes up, they won't just find themselves inside a novel? There is no way to know, therefore both are equally real. All correct. You may have the key pedestal. Traveler Marquis, you know what must be done. Please insert the great clockwork key. Oh, and uh, this is my family crest. Now, let me see what... What elaborate fiction the Clan of Wisdom was able to conjure up. If anyone's listening, I would like to submit these as my last words. I surrender. I'm the one who murdered Cappy. <laughs> look! Look! My clan's history is true as well! Ah, there's that same unforgeable signature again! Right here! What? Oh, does this mean that my clan is the only odd one out? Given that my clan's wisdom is such a subject of ridicule in your eyes, I will now appeal to my own personal intelligence, which I believe far surpasses that of my clan at large, and make a prediction. It seems likely that the claims made by each of our clans regarding their history and virtue are all true. Boberano? How can that be? Oh, I get what's going on. Once, when I was drinking with Guji Yai, she bet me a round of dried fish that I couldn't guess which cup the umeboshi was under. Whichever one I guessed, I was always wrong, and Guji Yai would lift a different cup to reveal the umeboshi. But then, I learned later from one of the shrine maidens, Miyuki, that all of the cups had an umeboshi under them. <sighs> this goes to show, I still got a long way to go before I become a great yokai. Oh, don't mind Fox Lady, that's just her way of teasing you. Actually, that reminds me. We can now open these three treasure chests. And unlike the guessing game you mentioned, this one's not a trick. Cool. Well, once you've plundered the last of Oberano's family wealth, we can go to my clan's place. Guess I'll take the clockwork key again then. Yoink! Parts. Could I have them, please?
The cohort of truth seekers followed Albizzi to his clan's sacred site. They arrived to the site of a giant guard towering over them. Up ahead is my clan's gigantified guard. He can be a little pig-headed, and he's incredibly strong. Your weapons won't even scratch him. Wait, but wasn't Cape's clan the one that's all about strength? So, what do you guys believe in then? Oh, the guard is one of Cape's people. Size is a coveted trait in the clan of strength, after all. Mine is the clan of empathy, and our key contribution is... Growth Serum! What's empathetic about that? Our ancestors believed that, just maybe, the dragon of old didn't mean us any harm at all. Perhaps the dragon simply didn't notice us, since we are so very tiny. So, they drank the growth serum and grew even larger than the dragon. Then, they set the dragon down, calmly explained their perspective, and eventually taught it how to empathize. Uh... The serum isn't what it once was, though. Nowadays, it doesn't make you grow all that much, and it actually makes you lose your empathy. So, I advise we take a detour. Despite Albizzi's words of caution, somebody, no doubt, has other ideas. Surely we could avoid a conflict with the guard, they think to themselves, if we could just try to understand one another. You could, of course, just take the path to your left and go around. But some people are gluttons for punishment. It's all part of the experience, I suppose. Everyone, I have returned. I come with the long-awaited Marquis and their followers to search for the lost origins of our clan. Well, we weren't told anything about that this morning. Get out of here. Leave us alone. <sighs> you and Albizzi only wanted to strike up a conversation with the guard. But since greeting you wasn't one of the items included in today's schedule, the relationship quickly soured. If you're just looking for a way in, why not consider taking the path on your left? Why is my own clan treating me like a villain? You've been away too long. We all have. Feels like we've been waiting forever. We should be getting close. Why is this place so full of junk? Are you the kind of people who never throw away the box when you buy something because you're worried you won't be able to return it without the original packaging? Uh, we'll never find the Oracle Pillars in all this mess. Never mind that, we have a more pressing issue. It seems there's a slight problem with my clan's family crest. The Marquis may need to utilize their wisdom to solve the issue. Wisdom too, huh? Well, you guys have a bit of everything, don't you? Except empathy. Can't you destroy the boxes a little more quietly?
Apparently that was incorrect. But don't blame yourself, it's Albizzi's clan's fault for taking terrible care of their family crest. How could they let something so important get so dirty? Apparently that was incorrect. But don't blame yourself, it's Albizzi's clan's fault for taking terrible care of their family crest. How could they let something so important get so dirty? This is the last one. The signature. So it's true. Empathy is one of the founding virtues of Constellation Metropole, too. Just as we suspected, all three are the truth. Uh, uh okay. Well, this is a lot to process. I, I feel a little empty inside. Yes, we found the truth, but there's too much truth. I get you. It's like in Inazuma, when there were only six books in the Mirage Warrior series, it was really popular. But by the time book number 88 came out, nobody wanted to read it. They all lost interest. A brief moment of joy is drowned out by a growing feeling of melancholy. But perhaps there is a glimmer of hope to be found too? Anyone? Anyone? All right, I'll say it. How is it the case that these three versions of history can all be true at once? That's exactly what Paimon was wondering, but Boborano kind of already explained it away earlier. So Paimon was worried she'd look stupid for asking the question. It's not a stupid question at all, my dear little pixie. While I did postulate that different truths may coexist, there is an issue when it comes to these three truths in particular. The problem is, all three truths are the history of the exact same thing, namely the dragon and the Metropole's origins. Yet all three bear the signature, showing that they're genuine. Suddenly, the sound of a bell rings out. The bell! It rang once! What does that mean again? Ah, yes! 
highest level of emergency. Everyone to the main entrance. Stat, bring all the glue traps and place them outside the gates. The whole city is on the lookout, and there's only one way out. It's the path right in front of you. <laughs> Why'd they ring the bell anyway? Also, why is one ring the highest level of emergency? Obviously because you have to respond fast when it's an emergency. It'd be a bit too late if they waited till the 99th ring. Outside! After them! We'll still be needing this clockwork key, but I yoinked it out before we ran, just in case. Okay, but back to the truth problem. There are three conflicting versions of the truth, and somehow they're all still true. What is that supposed to mean? I don't know. I doubt anyone here in Simulanka can make sense of it. All we do know is that any manuscript bearing her signature has to be valid. Well, she is the goddess of fate, the creator of all this. And all these manuscripts are her grand design. The reason we argued about who was right was that we didn't know enough about the truth of the past. But now we have the truth. So we just have to accept it. As surely as we will follow the clockwork path designed for us, so is this the course that history has taken. It is clear and incontrovertible. We will never argue again. Ah, thank you all. Is that all there is to it? Is this where the decision made at the first crossroads of destiny has led us to? A pointlessly happy ending? Huh. Overthinking it would be equally pointless. Well, that's enough for one day. Time to take a break. Could you be any more cryptic? You're planning something! Paimon knows it! Whatever happens, today was a breakthrough in my journey of discovery. I will go back and share it with my clan. Me too. And me. Let's leave it there for today, then. I'm sure we'll find out what else Mr. Narrator has planned for us tomorrow. You only get one body, so you gotta take care of it. But if... Just as if... Going to take care of your mind.
What a beautiful day, thought the traveller, before he was overcome by a creeping sense of foreboding. The voice in his head grew louder. Must go to Pendulum Lane. No, I didn't put a sticker on your back. <laughs> Something must have happened here after all. Everyone's crowded around. Oh, my God, this is terrible. I don't understand. The three great clans of Constellation Metropole have finally made peace with each other. Who could have done this? What happened? Oh no, someone's lying on the ground. Cape! How did this happen? Cape, you idiot! Wake up! You need to revise your last words or everyone's gonna start suspecting me! Last words? What did he say? Ahem. If I wind up dead one day... The murderer was Boberano. Ugh, you could have at least pretended to not remember it. I'm sorry, Boberano, but this is an interrogation. I have to give the detectives straight answers. Ah, don't worry, Boberano. I don't consider you a suspect, nor do I have the authority to charge anyone with a crime. So are you the last people to have had contact with him? My sincere condolences. You were travel companions, right? It's a real tragedy. I'm afraid it'll be out cold for another hour and a half, at least. Huh? Yeah, I know. It's despicable. Hitting someone in the back of the head is the second worst act of cruelty there is. The first being replacing their gear oil with extra strong glue. So, Cappy's not dead? Uh, his gears, metal frame, and shell are all still in excellent condition. It's just his uh, energy supply that's been all messed up. Ah, uh, wait. But surely you can't be suggesting that just because Cape isn't broken, there's no need to go looking for the culprit. No, no! There's a need! Huge need! Unfortunately, uh, this is rapidly turning into a cold case. There's no evidence and no witnesses. Uh, unless there's an official clockwork pedestal, the goddess of prophecy around here somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Then suddenly, the long-lost dragon of old flew across the sky. Where? Where? Uh, I didn't see anything. Wait, why can't I move? Oh, my mistake. It was just a cloud. Or a bird. Or something. If only we could turn time backwards and replay the crime. Isn't that one of those, uh, clockwork socket things right behind you? Ah, so it is. No wonder everyone here is suddenly struggling to move. Uh, Traveller, if you please, let's uh, recreate the crime scene.
Well, that clears it up. Cape was walking along the street, and he suddenly collapsed. He was faking it. What? So case closed? Aren't you supposed to investigate a little more first? Well, we literally replayed the crime scene and saw it with our own eyes. There's no need for any evidence gathering or powers of deduction now. And besides, maybe the truth is inherently strange by nature. Like how Constellation Metropole has three histories, each of which is the truth. But didn't you say Cape was struck in the back of the head and knocked unconscious? For all I know, he could have bashed his head against the toilet bowl before leaving the house, then walked here in a daze before finally passing out. As for why he might have done that, my guess is... Is... With the Supreme Clan question left unanswered and the tension in Constellation Metropole suddenly wiped away, he was looking to create a new source of conflict. Only then would the city feel alive again. Uh, do we really think he's capable of that, though? Sounds like a pretty complicated conspiracy for the average Simulanka resident. Traveler, something about the crime scene isn't sitting right with me. It just seems unnatural. Also, anything outside of the immediate area won't have appeared in the replay. Is it possible that something was missing from the scene? Why don't we search the area? Wait, what are you doing? Oh, we're... Uh, we're gonna head to Cape's house to check the toilet bowl for signs of an impact. No! Did you bump into something? Oh. Well, if it hurts, just let me know. Uh, hello there. Uh, have you seen my spear by any chance? Someone was shouting about a dragon a minute ago, and I instinctively threw it into the sky. Yeah. There's a spear here! It looks so mysterious. Let's take it! Hey, you're, uh, you're not from these parts, are you? Just visiting? Yep, that's right. Why? What's up? Ah, well, I was gonna offer you a great job in the Titanium Mines. A safe and secure working environment. Uh, doesn't sound very safe. Uh, at least not as safe as being a courier. To keep the titanium ore intact, we use specially designed pickaxes that can't cut through it. Even if you struck a person with it, it wouldn't so much as leave a scratch. And in terms of labor intensity, the work has been rated as Class 2 physical labor by a reputable organization. Even cats can do it. I'm not... A... <sighs> mind I give up welcome to Paimon's world mind you I don't know what happened today but somehow a pickaxe has gone missing maybe one of the giant guards broke it down so someone took it to perform a rapid resuscitation procedure sounds pretty brutal for a first aid technique still a missing pickaxe huh is it just me, Traveler, or does it seem kind of suspicious? Come here. Whatever it is you were looking to buy, please do come back tomorrow. It's just, I have to close early today. A bottle of growth serum has gone missing. 
If someone's stolen it with the intention of harming others, the consequences could be disastrous. There's a whole investigation into it, so I gotta close the shop while I do an inventory count. If it turns out I'm wrong and I miscounted, I could be charged with filing a false report and disturbing the peace. here. Looks so weird. Let's take it. behind it. Let's take it. Let's say one of these was the weapon used in the assault. Which one do you think it is? If it was the pickaxe, Cafe sure is lucky it's not still lodged in his head. Actually, you're wrong there, Paimon. The foreman at the mine was just saying, this kind of pickaxe is designed not to damage titanium, so it couldn't cause any superficial damage to residents here. But you could probably knock someone out if you hit them hard enough, and it wouldn't leave a scratch. Let's take this back to the crime scene and replay it one more time. Ah, oh, you're back. How was the toilet at Cape's house? Toilet? What about it? Oh, oh, yeah, um, forget that. What's this about? We thought the way Cape fell looked odd, so we searched the area for suspicious items and found this. It could have been deliberately placed out of range of the crime scene so it wouldn't show up when we replayed it. Now we've retrieved it, we were gonna replay it again. You don't mind, do you? Oh, uh, I, I just remembered I forgot to turn off the clockwork switch in my kitchen. Yeah, I think I'll just, uh... Oh no, you stay right there! Uh... We should be good now. So, it was you! <laughs> uh, I would congratulate you for cracking the case, but since I did such an abysmal job of covering my tracks, didn't exactly have your work cut out for you. So, all I can say is... Is... Catch me if you can! The would-be Marquis of Carabas dispatched the Necromata and Dukes, who ran off in pursuit of the poor little minion. Ah. 
The minion's poor little lower back was protesting painfully against the intense physical activity. He decided to take the elevator, giving him a moment to catch his breath. Really? His lower back asked. But the minion had no other choice. He resolved to make the jump down. By this point, the Necromata in boots was gasping for air. The minion was huffing and puffing even more loudly. But uh, we'll ignore that. I'm not! Don't underestimate the gold level courier of the Komania Express! A characteristically catty response from the Neko Mata. Tell me, what do you hope to gain from bullying me? I get to let up some steam! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> -ha, you fell into my trap! In fact, all the glue in this world is created by me, using my narrator powers. I make it and the residents just gather what they need. right now you can just jump out of your shoes and keep running but i wait i'm wearing boots this time yes! the unnamed minion made a last ditch escape attempt he began his long crawl long long climb climb sorry up the wall the, the tall the tall wall ah, he began his long climb up the tall wall can you call that a tall wall in urgent Neko parcel mode, I'll scale it in no time. Ah! <sighs> I'm beat. I surrender. You've got nowhere left to run. All right. I confess. That was fast. Getting caught by you here was a backup plan. I don't know if what I've done will make things better or not. Time to come clean. <sighs> I am the narrator. The one who's been guiding you all this time. <laughs> okay. I guess my voice acting skills have some room for improvement. Anyway, I only did what I did because... Spilling the beans. I poured my heart and soul into all this. I was worried you wouldn't ask. The truth is, I was one of the first conscious beings ever made by the goddess of creation. And I've known for a long time that this whole world is just a fairy tale written by the goddess of fate. I know they say that fairy tales are just made up for kids to read. But I refuse to believe that fairy tales are just fictional stories and nothing more. The reason why Constellation Metropole has three origin stories is that the Goddess of Fate wrote three drafts and couldn't decide which one she liked best. Then her cat trod all over them and they all got crumpled together, so the three worlds just sort of folded into one. The Goddess of Fate was torn between them anyway, since she couldn't decide which ending was best for the dragon or the kids. So when she saw what the cat had done, she simply decided to go with all three. Who would have thought? But what does any of this have to do with what you did? You're not a fictional character, so you couldn't hope to understand my sorrow. Honestly, I don't think there's anyone in all of Simulanka who would understand. Every day that I experience, every interaction I have with another person, is it really all just a work of fiction? The only reason the three great clans wanted to find out the truth was for the pointless task of electing the Supreme Clan. I thought that once they'd learned the truth, it might make them curious enough to investigate further. But as it turned out, they just... accepted it. And carried on living the same old lives. I have to motivate them to keep looking for answers, now that they think they've learned the truth. I have to make them uncomfortable with the superficial explanation that they took at face value. And I have to figure out, once and for all, while you real people from the outside world are still here. Are we real? Oh. That's my full confession. Time for you to take me back. I'm guessing I'll probably be forced to make a public apology. 
then sentenced to half a day in solitary confinement. I definitely deserve half a day. Oh, also, pass this message on to Cape Boberano and Albizzi, if you could. The Great Clockwork Key was originally put in place jointly by the ancestors of the three clans. If the three of them had any ability to cooperate whatsoever, they'd have been able to remove it by themselves. Over all these years, not once have they ever tried removing it together. Oh, my poor child. There's one thing you've been mistaken about this whole time. Ah! Whose voice is that? D detective w Was that you? Your voice acting's actually pretty good. The reason fairy tales are suitable for children is that they help them to understand the world. Fairy tales may be works of fiction, but at their heart lies an internal logic that is undoubtedly real-world truth in a condensed form. Perhaps they simplify good and evil, and perhaps they hide the darkness in metaphors. But let there be no doubt. The world within fairy tales is as real as can be. And by extension, you and your compatriots are also real. Goddess! Is it really you? The line that separates footnotes from narrative can never be crossed. Never the two shall meet. This is why you have never heard my voice before. But now you wish to break free from the story. And there's a cat nearby, so you can hear my echo. Necromata! Just... your echo? Oh, poor detective. So... We are a part of the real world, too. spinning. Albizzi just gave me a quick rundown of the situation. So you caught the detective? Sorta. We chased him until he surrendered. Oh, and he asked us to pass on a message. Does he really think we didn't try that? Cause we did. After six months in that place. Ah, that was my bad. I thought it was a stupid idea at the time, so I didn't really exert myself. I, uh... I also sort of stopped trying after three years. What are you... <sighs> Never mind. I'm partly to blame as well. On the second attempt, I just hugged the key and pretended like I was pulling as hard as I could. Uh, you guys are so lazy. My granny's neighbor's pet cat has nothing on you, and it spends all day, every day, sunbathing. Uh, anyway, uh, you said you heard the voice of the goddess of fate at the end? That's amazing. There is a world beyond our own, after all. What would you guys say to taking a trip to the outside world sometime? Otherwise, I got bashed in the back of the head for nothing. Depends. Do either of you know how to get there? But yes, I agree we should go and not invite the detective, just to annoy him. But maybe the reason we've never worried about whether we're real or not is that, unlike him, we weren't there to witness the creation of this world. We've never had any reason to doubt that we're real. If someone ever convinced me that these delightful dimwits, Cape and Albizzi weren't real, oh, I'd be devastated. <laughs>
deep breath, as if you're about to blow up a huge balloon. Exhale. Show them. Emerge. Right now. Now I'm mad! <laughs> oh, if there's any mechanical parts, could I have them, please? Thank <laughs> you. 